Good evening, and welcome to our Good Friday service. Much like I explained last night with our Maundy Thursday service, these Holy Week services are not very easy for me to record, so what you'll be seeing tonight is the Good Friday sermon that I preached last year from Resurrection Lutheran Church in Chicago, Illinois. The message will be substantially similar to what I'm preaching uh, this evening. This is a an incredibly holy night, the most holy night of the church year, much more so than Christmas, but not as holy as Easter. Easter is the fulfillment, so we invite you to be here in person, preferably on Easter Sunday, but also we will have a message for you online. Uh, uh, the the meditation is from the seven last words of Christ. Uh, they're found throughout the gospel, so I encourage you to look at the gospel accounts of the seven last words of Christ. God bless you uh, this night as you celebrate the death of our Lord, for from his death comes your life, your forgiveness, your salvation, and your victory over sin, death, and the devil. God bless you this day. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. These words very often preface the Lord's Prayer, and certainly on Sunday mornings here at Resurrection before we commune. And even as our blessed Lord hung bleeding and dying upon his holy cross, he still deigned, even in his last breath, to teach us to pray. There were four prayers that took place when Jesus was upon the cross. The first is a hard prayer for us to pray. Father, forgive them. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Oh, is that not hard? To forgive. Sometimes we hold on to grudges. Sometimes we hold on to the times that we have been wronged in the past and cling to it as if it's some sort of life jacket. And yet what does our Lord do? Even as he is whipped and scourged and mocked and humiliated and stripped naked with nails driven through his hands and his feet and a mocking crowd of thorns jammed into his head, what does he do? He forgives. He teaches us that forgiveness cannot happen without prayer. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. The second prayer from the cross was not spoken by Jesus. It was spoken by a common criminal, perhaps an anarchist, perhaps we do not know this man's crimes. He was a man who was hanging justly to be executed. And yet, even after a life lived in darkness, even after a light lived despising God and despising his temple and despising those things, that spark of faith, maybe that his mother or his grandmother taught him when he was just a boy, came through and he recognized that it was not a mere man hanging next to him, that he was someone special. That he was the long-awaited Messiah, the long-awaited Savior of his people. And so, as he turned and faced his Lord next to him, he spoke to him, and that is a prayer, for he was talking to God. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This thief, this common criminal, teaches us to pray and teaches us that there is nothing in our past that God will not forgive, that there is nothing deep down within us that will separate us from God. 
that he always deigns and indeed dares to forgive us and to welcome us home to his kingdom. When we pray that prayer, Jesus, remember me, he looks at you and says, I do remember you. I do remember you, Trinity, and Cadence, and Janaya, and JJ. I remember you when your name was placed upon you in the waters of holy baptism. And whatever you've done, whatever you will do, because of what my son has done for you, you will be with me in paradise. The third prayer doesn't sound much like a prayer. It's not something that we pray on our knees with our hands folded, looking nice and prim and proper. It is a prayer of agony, a prayer of distress. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? It is the prayer we pray when we are at wit's end. It is the prayer we pray when we are at the end of our rope, when we don't know where to turn. It's the prayer we pray when we have nothing left but to pray. The pain is too great, the hurt too strong, the burden too unbearable. God, are you there? Do you hear me? Why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? When we pray that prayer, for God also answers it. For God has answered it nearly 2,000 years ago. I have not forsaken you, but I forsook my son on your behalf so that you need never be forsaken until the very end. The fourth prayer that Jesus teaches us from the cross is the prayer at the end of the life. Last November, we buried my grandmother after 98 years of life. And as she was lying on her deathbed, she was clinging to this cross that she wore around her neck for all the years that I have ever known her. As I was watching on this Facebook video chat software, she was clinging so tightly to that cross as her breaths got further and further apart. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It is the prayer at the hour of death. And it is a prayer made fully in faith. Lord, I can do nothing more. My life is entirely in your hands. I commend my spirit to you. And that is a prayer, always answered yes, for it is a prayer prayed with only faith. There is nothing more at the end of one's life when that prayer is prayed but faith. And our Father says, yes, you are mine. Welcome home. Welcome to my kingdom prepared for you, that place won for you by the death of my son Jesus Christ and by his resurrection, you also rise again. Your spirit is mine. 
and I will never let it go. He is with me forever. And so Jesus teaches us to pray, even in his dying breaths. We know, thanks be to God, he did not stay dead. We know that he rises again to bring us to new and extraordinary life on Easter morning, but we take one night out to simply focus on the dimming light. Focus on the cross of Christ, lighting our way. Jesus there teaching us to pray, forgiving us all our sins. Be they deep and dark in our past, be they willful and habitual now, or be they something we will do. Jesus shed his blood upon that cross to forgive you of all that you have done. Father does forgive you this day. Your soul is safe in him. And through the blood of Christ, you have been brought to peace with God. A peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The light shines in the darkness because the darkness could never overcome it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.